what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Jim Sonis, who's here to break down divisional playoff weekend from a daily fantasy perspective. What's happening, Jim? I'm all good, Greg. We get to watch Patrick Mahomes and Lamar Jackson play football this weekend, so I can't complain. I am extremely excited for this slate. Got some cheap wide receivers to target, so going to be a good weekend. How are you doing? I'm wearing my blue today for Joe Judge. All rise, and we'll uh, hopefully stay out of the kitchens, but... Let's look forward to divisional playoff weekend. Let's start at the quarterback spot. We're looking for a value play. There are obviously eight quarterbacks to choose from. You're going with the best looking one, potentially. And that's Jimmy G. I think Deshaun Watson could give him a run for his money in that department. But I think, you know, it's at least 1A, 1B there for sure. But the good thing about Jimmy Garoppolo outside of his looks is that he's pretty cheap here at $7,800. I want to get to Lamar Jackson and Patrick Mahomes as often as I can. But Garoppolo is a pretty good way to save money if you want to get to guys like Travis Kelsey and George Kittle instead. At $7,800, he is at home. He is a pretty big favorite. And the concern around Garoppolo is about his floor. His floor is quite bad because... The 49ers could get out front. They could run the ball a whole bunch, and he could fail to score that many points. But we have seen Garoppolo have a couple of spike weeks recently since Emmanuel Sanders joined the team and with George Kittle being healthy. We've seen Garoppolo get 28 FanDuel points twice in that time, and that's a decent ceiling to have. And you kind of do need that if you're going to forego guys like Mahomes and Jackson in this slate. You need someone who can get you a ceiling. The floor is not as big of a concern because if you want a floor, you get to Mahomes, you get to Jackson. You're not looking down here for a good floor guy. But I think that Garoppolo does have that ceiling. The Vikings secondary is banged up. Mackenzie Alexander's not going to play this game they've had a pretty good number of injuries in that secondary so once you get past guys you know even the shell of Xavier Rhodes and Harrison Smith there's not a lot of depth in that secondary and we know that the 49ers pass catchers they've got options that's good for Garoppolo so if you want to get floor at quarterback this is not the week to spend down you could go for Russell Wilson maybe because he has been running a bit more recently but you want to spend up if you want a floor if you want a ceiling I think that Garoppolo has a path to a big game it probably won't be all that popular, and he is very cheap as well. So I like Jimmy G a pretty decent amount. I'm trying to get to Mahomes and Jackson whenever I can. But if I absolutely must spend down, I do think Garoppolo is a pretty good route for doing so. Spending down for Jimmy G, a fine route going up to Mahomes, Lamar Jackson. It's going to be the more fun thing to do, the more popular thing to do. You want to save a little money, go for some of these bigger name uh, skill position players. And Jimmy G, a fine option. My wife will kill me for not mentioning Russell Wilson, uh, along with Deshaun Watson and Jimmy G <laughs> in the handsome quarterback category. Let's move on to the running backs here, Jim. We can save a little bit of money. Last week, your boy was Devin Singletary. He was your favorite player on the slate, and he was fantastic. This week, your first running back you're mentioning here is Damian Williams for the Chiefs. Why do you like him? I assume it has something to do with the $6,900 price tag. Yeah, very nice salary, and that's part of the reason why Damian Williams is my favorite play of this entire slate, similar to Devin Singletary last week. And the reason we were on Devin Singletary last week is because his role was better than his salary would indicate. With Damian Williams, his role is better than his salary would indicate. He came back in Week 16 from that injury, played 53% of the snaps, and then in Week 17, a game where they wanted to win to try to get that first round by, which they did, he played 70% of the snaps. We've seen Williams play at least 70% of the snaps and now three separate games this year he has played 50 percent in seven games and in those seven games he has averaged 12.9 carries and 4.6 targets per game when you get that tied to patrick mahomes at home as a 10 point favorite you're gonna take that every time he is i think again my favorite play on the slate by a mile at any position there are some good value receivers but damian williams is cheap he is tied to a great quarterback. He is at home. He is a big favorite. He checks every box. You don't have to spend a whole lot to get there. So there won't be a whole lot of lineups I use this weekend that won't have Damian Williams. I think that his path to failure is pretty tough. And even if he doesn't score a touchdown, he can still pay off, which is similar to Singletary last week. So give me Damian Williams wherever I can get him. He's just too cheap for me to pass him up. Damian Williams, a fine choice. That price, really too good to pass out, like you're saying. Uh, in this explosive offense, you want as many pieces as you can get. This is an affordable one, so make sure you hop in. Damian Williams at $6,900. The second running back value play, it may be a little bit tougher or maybe way easier, depending on what happens with Mark Ingram. Obviously, Gus Edwards is in there potentially, but if Mark Ingram plays, who else can we start uh, that'll save us a little bit of money in our lineups? 
Yeah, as you mentioned, if Mark Ingram can't go, it's Gus Edwards as the value play. He'd be my favorite running back on this slate if he if we don't get Mark Ingram because he's fifty four hundred dollars, played a ton of snaps in week seventeen, got a lot of carries. I would love him if we got him, but if we don't get him. It's tough, and I think that Duke Johnson would be my favorite, potentially under the same assumption that we had with Damian Williams, where the Chiefs pull away in this game, because in the games the Texans have lost this year, Duke Johnson's average snap rate is 55%. He did get three targets in that wild card game, and the thing we like about Duke Johnson is that he is efficient in his touches, both as a running back and as a wide receiver, because teams are assuming they're passing if Duke Johnson is out there, which means his rushing attempts are pretty efficient, but he can also get you yardage through the air. And I think that for $5,600, that is enough to at least put him on the map. Now, I, I would like to avoid being down here if at all possible. You can go Carlos Hyde as well, a bit more expensive. If Mark Ingram is fully healthy, I like him quite a bit too as a more expensive running back. So ideally, we're not down here unless Mark Ingram does wind up sitting. But if you're playing on that Sunday only slate, you do have to find running back somewhere. And I think that, you, that Duke Johnson is an okay way to go, assuming that the Chiefs get out front and force the Texans to pass. Duke Johnson, he's not going to get 10 carries. He's not going to get 10 targets, but I think that he is efficient enough in his workload, and the workload should be good enough. We can go here about 4.6 targets per game in games that they lose. And I think that's enough on a short slate to justify using Duke Johnson as a value play. We'll see how much action Duke Johnson gets. If Houston's coming from behind, well, he'll play a lot more. If they're trying to play the ball control game, it'll be a lot of Carlos Hyde and Duke Johnson won't get the amount of touches that we hope. And that's kind of been a theme for Duke Johnson this year. We always expected more, and we just didn't get it. Hopefully, you put him in your lineups on Sunday, we will get that opportunity. But remember, if Mark Ingram is out for any reason, mainly the calf, but if he doesn't play on Sunday, Gus Edwards, a must-start in all formats. Let's move on to the wide receivers here, Jim. And that brings us to Emmanuel Sanders. You went with Jimmy G. You're pairing him up with Manny Sanders. He's priced at under $6,000. I know a lot of players are in on Debo Samuel. You're in on Manny Sanders. How come? Yeah, I like Debo too because he's been getting a lot of rushing attempts recently, which means the team wants the ball in his hands. So I will not talk you out of Debo, but Manny's actually cheaper. He is $5,700 for the Saturday through Sunday slate, whereas Debo is 61 and Debo is actually $6,600 for the Saturday only slate. So you're getting a good amount of savings on Emmanuel Sanders and actually a better receiving workload. If we look at the games this year where both George Kittle and Emmanuel Sanders have been healthy, Manny actually has 21% of the targets and 33% of the deep targets. Both those those numbers are better than what Debo, is Sam, Debo Samuel has gotten in those same spans. And again, as we talked about Jimmy G, this Viking secondary is pretty banged up. So I would expect the 49ers to be efficient in passing when they do decide to pass. Now, how often will they do that? That's the big question here. But I don't like the running backs here. I have to go at somewhere. And I think that the most logical path is with Emmanuel Sanders. He is cheap at 57. That allows me to pay up for my quarterback, maybe my tight end as well and get to guys like Dalvin Cook at running back. And Emmanuel Sanders' workload is very good, and I would expect this 49ers team to be decently efficient. So, again, not talking out of Debo. I love George Kittle as well. I think he is my favorite tight end on this slate. But Emmanuel Sanders is very cheap, has a good workload, and I think he has a good matchup as well. So for $5,700, I think he is a fine way to save salary at wide receiver. Not of the wide receiver you're choosing in San Francisco. They're both solid options here in this matchup for the Niners. And Manuel Sanders will allow you to save a bit of cash and put some other superstars, hopefully, in your lineup. Sanders, a fine place to start. Always good, theoretically, for like a 6 for 75. Maybe he'll get a touchdown. Hopefully, he'll be even more involved in Kyle Shanahan's playoff debut. One more wide receiver to mention here on today's program, and that's the Lizard. Alan Lazard gets a mention. I talked a lot about Lazard last week as I was making my playoff team. He's priced at $5,400. And what's really cool about Lazard is the amount of targets he has seen in recent weeks with Aaron Rodgers. Remember, the Packers, they still have someone to play for in week 16 and 17. Lazard's involved in his cheap exposure you know, on, on a team that you, you used to always want exposure to. I know it hasn't always been that way this year, but you have to like Lazard, especially at this price. Yeah, the role for Lazard has actually been pretty good for the past three weeks. He didn't get a lot of targets in Week 15, but in that game, he played 75% of the snaps, which was his most in a game that Devontae Adams has been active this year, and he's actually hit 75% in both games since then as well. So a three-game sample on Alan Lazard as effectively the number two wide receiver in this offense, and in those three games, he has 17% of the team's targets. So a good involvement there, but he's getting deep 
deep volume. And that's good. And that's what we want. We want guys who get looks downfield. And Lazard has gotten that. He has averaged 2.7 deep targets per game in this three-game sample. He had three deep targets in week 16. He had five in week 17 because Aaron Rodgers threw deep 23 freaking times. Didn't work out that well for Aaron Rodgers, but it was still encouraging to see him chucking it deep. And a lot of those did go to Alan Lazard. So what you're getting here is cheap exposure to Aaron Rodgers at home for $5,400 against a defense that isn't all that great. The Seahawks kind of middle of the pack once you adjust for their schedule defensively. So not a bad matchup. And a lot of the attention for that Seahawks defense will be on rightfully Devonte Adams. So there are a really good number of cheap value wide receivers on this slate. We talked about Emmanuel Sanders. I think Will Fuller, if he goes is good. I like Marquise Brown under the assumption his snap rate goes up in a must win game. And I think you could, if you hate yourself enough, talk about Sammy Watkins as well at $5,200. So you've got options down here, but among the guys, $5,500 or lower, I think Lazard is my favorite given the offense he plays in and given the role he has played. It's good cheap volume and he should be efficient in it. So Alan Lazard among the guys below $5,500 is my favorite for the divisional round. Your favorite target at the wide receiver position, it's Alan Lazard. You mentioned 15 through 17, how many targets and how just often he has been on the field and a part of this Aaron Rodgers-led offense is a good spot. Sure, you want Devontae Adams. Devontae Adams, well, it's going to be a tough matchup for him uh, against Seattle and, and the Griffins and whatnot. Lazard, he should hopefully be able to get a little extra room, a little extra space, run wild, and produce fantasy points. Let's move on to the tight end position here, Jim, and... When we look at tight end, he looks at Kyle Rudolph. He scored the game-winning touchdown for Minnesota in overtime against New Orleans. Now, he may have a different pair of gloves that he's wearing on Sunday. <laughs> You're still going with him. How come? Yeah, we're talking about the gloves. We're talking about the push-off. We're talking about the touchdown. But we're not talking about the role change that Kyle Rudolph got, got last week, which I think is interesting because it was a game the Vikings had to win. And they rode Kyle Rudolph more than they have done the entire season. His 92% snap rate was his highest since week two. And his seven targets were the most he has gotten all year long. Part of that's because the game went to overtime. But I think seeing that snap rate be that high and the targets be that high indicates that the Vikings are very comfortable riding him this deep in the year, which is not something I would have expected given Rudolph's advanced age, the fact that he hasn't always looked that great on the field. But he missed. He made a couple of missed tackles in that game against the Saints, too. Didn't expect that and we know the Vikings will go here in the red zone as they have done for a long time so I did not expect to be in on Kyle Rudolph once Adam Thielen got healthy I expected it's just to be Stefan Diggs Adam Thielen and Dalvin Cook but last week really did change my mind when it came to Kyle Rudolph I think that he and Jacob Hollister are kind of the two tight ends who stand out to me below six thousand dollars but Hollister's upside is something I would very much question for Rudolph I think the two touchdown game is within his range of outcomes and he's going to get volume and be on the field. I like that quite a bit. So I'm not going to write off Jacob Hollister. I think that he still has a path to a good game, but I think that Rudolph's is a bit clearer and his upside may be a little bit higher. So I'm going to favor Rudolph down here. Obviously we want to get to uh, Travis Kelsey and George Kittle when we can, but you're not going to always be able to get there if you're spending up at quarterback. And I think that Kyle Rudolph is where I want to go most often when spending down at this position. Whether it's Jacob Hollister or Kyle Rudolph, both tight ends don't cost you a whole lot and put you in a position to be successful. Jim mentioned how Minnesota's offense has changed over in recent weeks, even with Dalvin Cook and Alexander Madison back in the lineup. Kyle Rudolph has been a part of the offense in the red zone. Even though the play wasn't called for him, he still came down with a touchdown. We'll see if he can do the same against San Francisco on Sunday. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel Hurry Up. We appreciate the time. Good luck this week. Jim, we'll talk to you next week. Looking forward to it, Greg, and just looking forward to uh, an awesome slate of football this weekend and just enjoying some really fun football games. So it's going to be a delight, and we will talk to you again next week. Good luck to you, too, this weekend. I appreciate it, my man. Tomorrow, Gabe Morenci will join me and give us his six best bets from Divisional Playoff Weekend. For Jim Sonis, I'm Greg Sussman. Have a great night, and we'll see you tomorrow.